welcome to this special edition of Web TV Focus, where we discuss topical issues across the world in economy, business, and financial markets. I am Yemisi Lanre Ido. Our conversation today focuses on the theme, Strengthening Reporting Standards for Nigeria's Financial Services Industry. And joining me to do that in the studio is the Chairman, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Ikeja District, Olusha Sokwade. Many thanks for your time. Good afternoon, YMC, and my pleasure to be here. I really want to know, the elections have come and gone. Many investors have had to sit on the sideline because of the uncertainty in the polity. And of course, as accountants, uh, the books have not been balanced as well because monies are not coming in and going yeah. out. Yeah, so let me get your initial reaction to these elections that have come and gone. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me first say uh, credibility to the uh, election umpire, that's INEC, for bringing uh, in uh, a little uh, game changer and what we can refer to as confidence in the electoral process. Uh, I'm sure if you look at the history of uh, our election since 1999, uh, some may not take this, but uh, it's the truth that this is the most credible election. And what do I mean? The introduction of beavers seems to be the game changer. Uh, we've been having serious manipulation in terms of uh, the numbers of uh, people that participated in the voting. I don't know if you monitor the trend of things, you will see registered name, uh, voters, three million in a particular state, and only 300 will be voting. Some are actually accounting it to uh, voter apathy, but for people like us, we feel it's uh, the real figure that is speaking out, if not 100%, at least 70%. Uh, because the voter awareness was just out there, the younger generation brought out their thing. And you can see uh, surprises springing up. Uh, the power of incumbency could not work in some areas, losing out. So we give uh, credit to INEC. Uh, we believe there are room for improvement, uh, even though some of those things are centered around uh, voter suppression, attack, and security, but for the umpire on their own to bring in something that can checkmate the excesses of the politicians, we give kudos to it. I will believe uh, possibly when we come 2027, you know, what we had uh, 2019 was card reader. And with card reader, anything can happen. But with beavers, uh, it's difficult for you to, be, to, to break that particular thing because uh, it has to be you. If it's not you, it's not it's you. It's not you. And that's giving confidence and for other people to know now their vote can count. Then we can talk of the other security aspect or now to tame it. At least that's technology. By the time we improve on technology, maybe you and I will be casting our vote as we're doing the interview <laughs> like this. All right. Indeed, it was a colorful election, we must say. And um, the INEC was able to account for the number of voters with that beavers that you have mentioned. But So let's look at... Uh, the, the financial activities of, um, um, of the economy, the financial activities of Nigeria as a whole, as well as the CBN, uh, looking at accountability. And there was a lot that happened preceding the election. That's talking about uh, the cash crunch, uh, the Naira redesign and all of that. And the excuses uh, that the government also gave uh, that we're going to curb vote buying. So what lessons do you think we should be taking away uh, from the Naira redesign policy of the government? Yeah, uh, if you look at uh, the Naira redesign policy, very fantastic policy. But like some of us, we do say, our problem is always implementation. Uh, I was part of the people that actually was on several media houses, you know, supporting the uh, redesigning of currency, looking at some of the excuses that the government gave for vote buying, uh, the aspect of uh, kidnapping and paying ransom. and uh, But uh, given an holistic view, uh, there are certain flaws that we blame the CBN for uh, because uh, when you want to have a policy change like the redesigning of currency, there should be template that you would have test run. Number one, you are directing like uh, more than 100% of the populace to e-payment channel. Uh, what are the tests run that you've actually put in, in place? The stress test on the infrastructure of the bank. Uh, before, the, uh, before October, uh, possibly maybe a day I do one or two transfers. 
is when it's eminent. Most of the time, you just give it out. You At least you have certain cash in your pocket. But uh, <laughs> when it was uh, December, January, uh, the scarcity, in fact, January, to be precise, I, I was out of the country, and I came back, I needed to go to for a program, and to get 20,000 was pretty difficult for me. And I'm like, what is happening? But you discover that my transaction base via the e-payment platform increased from two, three per day to about 30. To the extent that you want to do something worth 400 Naira, you have to do a transfer. 500 Naira, you do a transfer because you don't have the cash and you must get those things. So we discovered that uh, CBN1 did not carry out uh, uh, due diligence on the infrastructure of the commercial bank that they relied on with the e-payment platform. And we started seeing a lot of failure. You know, beforehand, there was this distrust on the part of the populace and the banking sector with the failure rates. The response at which some of these things are reverted are not just there. CBN gave 48 hours for reversal of transaction. Is that what is obtainable? The answer is no. You go to banks, when you have failure, they ask you to fill a certain form, and it takes them 14 days. And you ask yourself, if that is the last money that we have with you, what happened? That distrust was there. So when they migrated everyone to start using the e-payment platform, it could not withstand the stress. As I'm still talking to you, I'm still battling with my banks <laughs> to help me make some refunds of debit that they did not get value to. And I, I was debited for it. So I think uh, uh, CBN didn't do a deep uh, 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 consideration of the platform that they were actually diverting people to. Uh, it would have been a very good platform because we traveled out of the country. If you go to UK, go to US, the highest denomination they have is $100. And that $100 is actually being promoted by Nigerians where they travel. I'm sure you understand what I mean. You at least see $100 with a citizen of those countries. I was in Israel and I paid $100 and it went through like four stages for them to confirm that it's actually an original. And I'm like, what happened? They said they at least said that because what you see is the lower denomination, $10, $5, $2, one, in fact, $1 is like you're having it uh, everywhere there. And we felt that that policy will reduce that uh, uh, concentration we have for 1500 and we can, you know, uh, be with the lower denomination yes. that we cannot have more concentration on other. But because there was no thought through of that policy, we had to revert back to status. Mm. Un unfortunately, that policy affected so many businesses, trading activities, stifling businesses, and Nigeria lost about 20 trillion naira over that period when it happened. We don't know what is going to pan out after this election. A lot of people are saying, okay, CBN released this money that you have, you know, held. But no, let's look away from that now. Do you think there was no synergy between the financial, uh, the fiscal policies and the monetary policy when it comes to these redesigns? Because yeah. initially we know what happened with the Minister of Finance when she said she wasn't aware of the whole policy. So was there no synergy? And what would you be expecting them to be doing going forward? Yeah, sincerely speaking, there has not been synergy between the handler of the uh, the fiscal policy and that of the monetary policy as we expect it to be. It's, it's quite disheartening that on the national TV, the minister was telling us that uh, she was not aware of a key uh, uh, policy of uh, redesigning of the currency and were caught at base. Because you see, fiscal policy and monetary policy have an handshake if the economy must grow. But when you're working in a divergent area, it creates more problems for the economy. And that's what we're saying. Having in terms of our inflation rate, it's not been going up. Foreign exchange keep going up. Because the other arm that's supposed to complement those fiscal policy are not working in tandem the way it should be. So for us, uh, the new administration coming in, we want a situation where there will be synergy between the handler of uh, the uh, monetary policy, which is CBN, and the handler of the fiscal policy that monitor the government expenditure and the like, in such a way that when they talk and have an handshake with one another, they know the right policy to put in place that the other will not affect uh, this particular one, and the economy can be better for it. One thing I know is that those ideas are there. Is when it comes to implementation, this ego, of a thing comes in and we it affects the common man on the larger scale. Now, synergy is indeed very crucial. Uh, let's look at what happened because what we'll be wondering uh, with these lapses that we've seen in the past months and um, how it affected the banks in Nigeria, what we'll be wondering 
if these banks are strong enough to keep standing. So we'll take the example of what has happened in the U.S. in the past two weeks, U.S. and Europe, yeah. and with the collapse of some major banks, banks uh, yeah. uh, the Silicon Valley Bank and um, the Signature Bank as well, and one other also joining in. So what would you say is the implication of these two Nigerian banks uh, if we see these major banks collapsing? Yes, a lot of um, um, economists and experts have said that, okay, maybe we should anchor it on three things that happened. Trump's um, regulation on rollback, uh, risk management, or is it interest rates? So what would you say is the implication? If we see the Nigerian economy facing inflation as well, are banks still strong? What's the implication of that collapse yeah, uh, on, on for, Nigerian banks? For majority of us who analyze issues like that, we've been so it's been it's been a call for worry. We must say uh, because the regulators that are supposed to monitor the commercial banks are not having the best of the activities. Otherwise, the policy uh, uh, brought about by the regulator, which is CBN, who also monitor the monetary policy, wouldn't have failed. If you have monitored well to know the infrastructure base of some of these commercial banks and also the fintech companies that are coming in, mm -hmm. you would have been able to uh, have understanding of uh, the duration at which we will carry uh, some of those things. Uh, and that's why it gives calls for it. If an uh, organization like this are failing in Europe, how much more? These are people that have processes put in place who monitors activities deep down. Uh, compared to some of us that we pay leave services to some of these things, we are more reactive than being proactive to issue. It's worrisome, but that doesn't give the respite that uh, an average person should be scared. Because the best way we have to even keep your, your, your funds it's the bank. You cannot, uh, if you look at the pros and cons, comparing that with you keeping your money in your own, you know it's not advisable. And uh, it's high time that the CBN come up with policy to monitor some of the activities that the banks are doing. Not just enough of uh, the reports they provide to you. Do you have an on-spot check on their activities that they carry out? You know an average auditor, uh, when they want to pay a visit to you as an organization, they don't give you for standing, but they come on announced. I mean the internal audit. Yeah. They come on announced if it is to go to the finance department or to go even to the uh, uh, production app. What they're after is they just come on and, uh, on announce and they want to take inventory of what you have. So if you have taken something that should be in the office home, without the approval that is necessary. I'm sure you ask, uh, answer the query to it. These are certain things that we expect uh, the regulators, CBN, Amcon, and some other to do about uh, the asset base, uh, the risk analysis of some of these organizations, and also the policy that they are putting in. How much of it had been implemented? by the commercial bank. Do they even have understanding of some of those policies? Or the CBN just come out the policy and there's a wide gap between uh, the, the, the owners of the, uh, of the commercial bank or those that are saddled with the responsibility of running the day-to-day -day running. There must be synergy. And when that is done and you have an, a full grasp of what is going on, then definitely you can know the right direction to take to solve a situation when it happens. I'm, I'm glad you talked about monitoring. And that is, is a full responsibility of the CBN as, yeah, a as a regulator. Yes. So as a leading professional body, as an accountant, you've talked about monitoring. And I'm sure that uh, a new government will be coming in, just give it a few months, months yeah. to come. And I'm very, very sure as well that a new CBN governor will be appointed. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a new uh, cabinet, new ministers in the cabinet. So what would you be expecting? Aside monitoring, I know that... Nigeria was so key on financial reporting standards at some point. So but what would be your assessment, a two-in-one question, your assessment generally of FRC at the moment, and what would you be expecting of a new, uh, of, of the, the roles of these bodies when they eventually come in? Yeah, uh, for the uh, FRC, the Financial Reporting Council, I'm sure you know we have this uh, global standard, the IFRS, that everyone actually plug in and key into it. But some of us have been an advocate that uh, the global space is good, but there are at times you need to domesticate some of those yes, things. Yes, localize it. You localize it to your side. How does those things work? It might work well in India. It might work well in US. But the environment, I play in the energy sector, uh, the level of energy theft in this country cannot be compared 
to uh, what is obtainable in India. And you ask yourself, you go and borrow the policy or the implementation of their sector to Nigeria, the company will collapse. So we must look at ways, some of these uh, reporting standards, how do we localize it? How do we put it in the domestic content that an average businessman will be able to have a plug in most of the time, some of these businesses are not international businesses. They are, they are businesses that you do within the country. How can we uh, use those international standards, localizing it in such a way that it will favor our businesses to allow for growth and development, not just taking hook, line, and sinker. The, 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 the international or multinational companies can uh, plug into those, uh, the international space when they want to have a global space. But what is, are you doing for the local content, the local organization, in such a way that the standard you are given, like you look at some, some, some certain organization, thank God for the ease of doing business, that revolts you saying that you will not pay taxes if you don't have up to 25 billion turnover, 25 million turnover and the like. Those are not applicable to the international financial reporting standard. But we have to localize it and say, what can we do to enhance the growth of businesses? Those are areas that we should be looking at. Those are the areas that we should be considering. The new administration should look at atmosphere where we can build infrastructure to grow the business. And one of the strategic ones is power. When there is power, the cost of operation of average uh, organization reduces. And when that is done, you'll be able to have more productivity, you'll be able to engage more people into the service, and the economy will be better for it. If I produce more, do you know who gains? It's not individual like you and I. It's the government. Because what the bottom line is that I'll be able to pay more taxes to the government. And when you get more taxes, you'll be able to you know, meet your obligation as a nation. But when the companies locally are not growing, it creates more problem for the uh, uh, global space. It is when we grow here that we can talk of international <laughs> of uh, course. space. So maybe the word should be localized, really. Yeah, yeah. Localize the standard. The standard so, so that we can <laughs> exactly. have the growth. All right, so just let us round up on this conversation now. Okay. The incoming government at all levels, what would be your recommendation on accountability? What's that immediate thing you'd be recommending to this government uh, to give account on public financial management? Yeah, uh, you, you, I want to say there is that uh, accountability uh, has not been uh, a focal point in time past at the federal, at the state, at the local government. We want a situation where this uh, administration will be intentional about giving uh, account of stewardship, not propaganda. Uh, we want instances people can have access to some of the document to verify when project, if you look at the SDG uh, policy that comes up, you have to talk about uh, sustainability. These are things people can verify. And when you're saying transparency, in terms of procurement, that's a very big loophole that people capitalized on, talking about negotiation. What best can we do to get some of these things done at the right pricing? taking greed out of it. And it is when you put it in the public domain that people can question it, they can scrutinize it and give you feedback. How honest are you treating the feedback that you're getting from people? We must start putting that into consideration. Like uh, we had from the, for the state government, I think the World Bank brought out uh, a particular policy talking about SIFTAS, where they have to make known their uh, financials. Uh, it, it was incentivized. So when you do that, there are certain things you get from the World Bank. And most state key into it so that they can get some of those funds. But it gives we, the professional, opportunity to look, in, to look into the books of the state. The grassroots one is where we are not even having anything at all. The local government, there is nothing that can be shown for that you can lay your hands upon to say these are the in and out of what is happening there. And the government must look at it because grassroots is fundamental for every group. I cannot, I stay in a local area. I'm sure I should speak more to my local government chairman before I get to the state. Because the state has over 20 local government to attend to. But the local government are just few of us to attend to. So until we start trickling it down to local government, and like we had during this election, we've uh, made them realize that it's not business as usual. 
local government election is going to be keenly contested. People will have their eyes on it. And thank God, one of the amendments, uh, constitutional amendments signed by the, the Buhari is uh, the autonomy of the local government and the judiciary. So if we have that, so the complaint of saying that your funds at the local government is being given to the state, you don't have control by it, that is over. Now you must give accountability of some of the incomes that we are having. And with that, we can build that trust. Everyone, the trust deficit is there and government must uh, create a room for us to build back the trust so that when the people have confidence in you, they will pay their tax without evading it and will be all uh, better off for it. Mm, give account and we'll be able to build trust, build credibility. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, the Chairman, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Ikeja District, Olusha Sokwadi. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, MC, for Focus. having me. Thank you. And that will be all for this special edition of Web TV Focus. Aligning to global best practices and reporting standards is critical to stability of the financial services industry. It is also noteworthy that the esteemed ICANN body will play a vital role in shaping uh, the global economy as well as Nigeria's economy. Till we come again your way, I remain Yemisi Landre Ido. Thank you so much for watching.